Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Will Master, and I'm a senior program manager at the film department in the British Council. Um, and thank you very much to, uh, to Creative Europe for inviting me to chair this panel, which is called Finding Your Audience. And um, we've got an absolutely fantastic, red-hot uh, selection of panellists for you. Um, to my immediate right is Joost Darmin, who is a senior programmer at IDFA in the Netherlands. Um, to his right, Marek Hovorka, director at Hilava International Documentary Film Festival in the Czech Republic. And to Marek's, uh, sorry, not to your left, to your right, to Marek's right is Cynthia Gil, um, who's uh, one of the directors at Docs Lisboa in Portugal. Um, so I think, you know, in a sense, we're moving chronologically through the life cycle of a film, and we've got now to the all-important moment of of, of exhibition. Um, I would just like to, I, I don't want to repeat too much on um, on what the last panel did in terms of going blow by blow uh, through what the kind of festivals have to offer. Instead, I'd like to look very specifically at the kind of exhibition themes of your festivals. And I'd like to ask you if you could, because we haven't got a huge amount of time, uh, relatively briefly, describe the personalities of your festivals. Um, and I mean that as a kind of an event to attend as a filmmaker, but also in terms of your programming approaches. What is interesting to you as programmers? What does your event do for documentary that is different to another event that might be doing documentary as well? So can we start with you, Joost, and then move along? Thank you. Uh, well, um, ITFA has been there for 28 years. We have the 29th edition this year in Amsterdam. Um, yeah. Basically, we sort of program uh, the whole range document. Nah, yeah. the whole range documentary has uh, to offer. So our documentary, so our program is really wide. Uh, it has a wide wide scope from uh, more political pamphlets to uh, interactive documentaries. We have been working. We have our tenth anniversary now of our interactive program at Edfa also. Um, and I think also what is important is that we sort of um, try to pick up and follow filmmakers throughout their career. So, and uh, it's which sort of the first time we you can have a film in the program is when you have a graduation film for a student competition, and then we follow you, hopefully your whole career until you are a master and uh, premiere at uh, Cannes or. Berlin or somewhere else and have your film in our master section so we still have the film in the festival and can present it and can show those big uh, names. Excellent. And, and, and it was also a very big market which will... will yeah, of will course. Yeah, well, yeah. I think maybe it's sort of... Uh, I think when you sort of to put it in one line, sort of celebrate your new film and present it to the audience, mm -hmm. But also work for your new film in the sort of you business to business one. part of the and the business to business part I think is the most important mm. for the audience here also. Which, uh, Would you have any s programming strands or c programming concerns that you would say are unique to IDFA relative to um, to other documentary festivals? Or, or, or you genuinely run the whole spectrum? Yeah, well, that's what we sort of try to and. Uh, that's what we. But I think what's big at the, the interactive program is really big at our festival. And my colleague uh, Kasper Sommer really picked it up at a really early uh, period of time, like ten years ago. So, we, so that's good. He built a really sort of community around that as well, and it's there. Um, <coughs> what I personally find really interesting and important also is that we show uh, not only new films but also uh, classics. Mm. Especially for documentary, I think it's uh, difficult to see those all those great films that have been made in the past on the on the big screen in the cinema. I think we should celebrate also that legacy of what documentary has brought us in the past, and uh, we try to work on that films. Or we work on that films in uh, sort of theme programs we have. So basically, we show 300 films, 200 uh, new films in several competitions and like 100 films we sort of put away in uh, in theme programs. So uh, about around 300 films including shorts, features. Yeah, that's yeah. everything. It's Interactive program, uh, yeah. things, uh, installations, uh, everything. Okay, but, uh, great, wonderful, thank you. Marek. Yes, uh, good afternoon everybody. Uh, well, uh, I am uh, coming from Ihlava, Jihlava, Ihlava, how, how you want to pronounce uh, International Documentary Film Festival, uh, what's the largest event in Central and Eastern Europe. 
uh, you know, Czech Republic is somewhere in the center of Europe. Yeah, we don't know exactly what Europe is and where it has borders, but somewhere in between, yeah, there is Jihlava. So it makes sense to go at least in the middle to meet the second half. Yeah? And from your perspective, it's really if it's really is like meeting the second half of the continent, even you are not on the continent. Uh, <laughs> Spiritually speaking, I think we, you know, we are absolutely. I'm happy you understand. Me. Yeah. Uh, and the same it's with documentary. Yeah? Uh, we've heard uh, a lot of about uh, films which are creative, but documentaries, creative documentary, creative fiction, television documentary. Uh, who, who knows? Uh, we dare about cinema. Yeah? And documentary is uh, one of the most, uh, let's say, vivid and flexible uh, way of approaching uh, reality today yeah? through uh, audiovisual uh, tools. Uh, and that's something what uh, uh, made me to work uh, and founded the festival 20, 20 years ago and work for uh, the festival since that moment till today, yeah? because it's changing so much. And the program focuses on these changes. So we have like classical documentaries, yeah, retrospectives. Uh, we have uh, new ways, uh, uh, let's say new talents, debutants. Uh, we focus on... Uh, we call it docfi, documentary fiction. Yeah, these films you really don't know if they are fiction or documentary, and documentary is very much inspirating the fiction world for years. Uh, so it's interesting to uh, focus where are the borders between fiction and documentary, uh, and so on. Um, last year, uh, this is the catalog of the festival. We have 280 films, eight, uh, 280 films. Uh, we have five competitions, and uh, the slogan of the festival last year was Eternity. Uh, because, you know, that's also a way how you think about films, that you don't want only to be successful one year. Yeah? Uh, you want uh, your films be screened in 10 years, 20 years, when you will not be alive, but films will be here. Yeah? It's, it, it's really like uh, uh, your trace. So... Uh, Eternity, but also, you know, uh, in Czech we are not only one line thinking, uh, but uh, we are really between the lines. So our uh, designer uh, uh, w uh, played with the word because in Czech it's věčnost, but if you change the C, it doesn't mean eternity, but it means uh, b being perfect uh, or being precise. So for us the films are in between eternity and being very concrete and precise. Yeah? That's documentary for us. Uh, so, uh, you know, as you could see, uh, it's not easy to say which films are those which we are trying to find. We try to find films which we even don't expect to find. And these films we bring to audience. And would you say uh, that you have any kind of polit uh, you know, inevitably documentary is political in, in many ways, and you see that peppered through a lot of documentary film festivals. If there are a, a couple of adjectives that you'd like to describe as a programmer to sum up your contemporary selection every year, what would they, what would they be? Well, you know, uh, going to ITFA or to other festivals, I saw, you know, that there are uh, big political, uh, like, line in the programming, but... Uh, we don't have colonies in Czech Republic. Yeah. Uh, even in Eastern Europe, East European countries don't have colonies. So they have completely different perspective of thinking about the world. Yeah. And we are political in terms of uh, shaking our today's reality. So for example, if I should name one film which is representing uh, this different political perspective, it's Czech Dream. Maybe you know it. It's a very famous uh, Czech documentary film from, I think, 2001. And it's film about uh, campaigning, how today big companies are making campaigns. And these two directors did it through faking the campaign. And they created a fake supermarket called Czech Dream. Yeah, because Czech people like shopping, of course, as all the other after 89. Yeah, it was a big uh, discovery for us that we can shop in. <laughs> so, um, so this Czech dream ended with the scene that people are running on the field to this fake wall of supermarket, yeah, because it's fake dream also. Uh, so this kind of films are somehow political, uh, strong in, in, yeah. in, in the region. But of course, it's not only. Yeah, mm. for, for for Eastern Europe, of course, some Kafka humor is part of our identity. <laughs> yeah, uh, but not only. Yeah? We are also very serious in terms of art. 
Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Cynthia. Hi. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, so, first thing that I would say, it's important to know that Doc Lisboa is uh, made by the Portuguese Documentary Association, which runs some other projects like Lisbon Docs, the co-production forum with the EDN, and uh, an international seminar, Docs Kingdom, a little bit like the model of Flaherty, smaller. Uh, anyway, Doc Lisboa is, um, it will have the 14th edition mm. this year. Uh, it's a film festival that has a strong, strong audience in the country. So uh, for Portugal, it's quite impressive because we always have around 26,000 people. Wow. Uh, also with international audience. And we screen, last year we screened 240 films, though I really want to reduce it because we want to uh, be more focused and more uh, point to more uh, accurate mm. in what we want to defend. So the, we have a big historical part. We always do at least two retrospectives, one full retrospective of an author. This year will be Peter Watkins, uh, which is interesting for you, mm. <laughs> probably you know. Uh, but uh, we also have a kind of uh, thematic retrospective. Last year we did it on terrorism and uh, representation. And we, in this uh, thematic retrospective, we like very much also in the parallel sections to put into context and relationship uh, contemporary films with historical films. So this is something that we are really interested, not only to look at the contemporary panorama of documentary or of cinema, <laughs> but, uh, but also to, to, to relate it to, to the history. Uh, as for new films, we screen students' films, uh, Portuguese students' films, but uh, we, we screen, we have a first feature competition, first feature documentary competition. But what we are interested, we are interested in uh, films where we can feel, this is not very easy to say, but films where we can know when we watch them why this film was made. Mm -hmm. And this is not, it, it, this does not come f exactly sometimes from the subject. It may come from the needs, the will, the desire of the author to do it. So it can be about anything. We don't do a subject oriented uh, program. Though, of course, there are some issues in the world that we are interested in, but we will not never show a film just because of the subject. Okay. Never. Um, but we are interested in the singular, singular and only uh, the unique approach of each filmmaker to, to, to a reality. And uh, this is why we defend sometimes fragile films, films that uh, may be seen as, uh, that have some flaws, that, uh, some, that's why we screen a lot of first films. Um, but we, we, we really defend that uh, a political film does not have to be a pamphlet to have political strength and uh, politics and aesthetics and cinema and arts do, do not have to be separated. So this is what we, we really defend. Politically, we have a section called Cinema of Urgency and there we program uh, in a subject-based uh, way, but not documentary. We program YouTube films. So we program films that people do, sometimes even not filmmakers mm. do, for social networks. Okay. Uh, for instance, we did uh, focus on the Abu Nadara collective much before they won awards in film festivals. Um, so this is basically what we have. And I should say that now we have a very small new project of uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's a market project, it's a project development project <laughs> called Arke. It's completely free, it's, mm. not, uh, it's not paid. And uh, we only take around six projects for each atelier, it's mm. two ateliers, one of project development and one of uh, work in progress and one-to-one -one meetings. And it's basically directed to people who are experimenting uh, crossing borders between documentary and other media, but also, or other 
writings, but also to new filmmakers, new coming filmmakers. Okay, fantastic, thank you. Now look, the, the, the title of this session is, is Finding Your Audience, which is of course what these documentary makers want to do, ultimately. Now that audience isn't in quite the small number of places it used to be, it's, it's everywhere and is kind of reachable everywhere. Um, I'd, I think we, we need to get your advice on, uh, the reason I asked you about the personalities of your festivals is that that's useful research, it's useful for them to know what kind of documentary they have or are they making? What are the kind of festivals that are likely to be receptive to that work? You, however, are only three festivals amongst an entire ocean of film festivals. For, for those starting out on their festival journeys, what is the best way to strategize um, about you know which festivals to apply for, how much money to spend, how long to wait to hear about a reply if you're a filmmaker? And what are the things that it's useful for them to know from your perspective as programmers about the way in which you're organizing your screenings, um, just. Um, yeah, my, my f first advice would be um, to um, sort of keep your premiere for an interesting festival. <laughs> yeah, but you, you'd be surprised how easily people say, oh, they get invited to a festival and then they're so happy and overwhelmed and they give it away and then your chances are reduced for at least for our festival we are looking for our main competitions at least for the for world premieres mainly so and or yeah mainly world premieres and international premieres so a sort of premier strategy is really important i think and i would say it's great if your film gets invited but always try to see if you sort of uh, can reach higher and sort of make a sort of uh, yeah a b c list and uh, and then the world is divided in sort of uh, it's a continent, so for every continent you should sort of keep this strategy going on. And uh, maybe then sort of, yeah, later in the in the structure, or I say it in your, in the career of the film, then uh, you can go to that smaller, more specific festivals and uh, they can have a life there as well. And can a dedicated documentary film festival do more for your documentary than perhaps a, uh, you know, a kind of ultra A-list festival yeah. along the lines of Berlin and Cannes? That's a choice, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, for if you go, if you can go to, like we 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 have to be honest, we can't compete with uh, Cannes or uh, Venice or uh, <laughs> Berlin. That's also the truth. And if you can go there with your film, I would absolutely do it. Mm. But it's a different market, and it's a different. And you are a documentary there. Those films are, of course, mainly about features, and they get the main uh, attention. So. It can be a strategic choice to choose for us. I obviously hope you do it. But <laughs> and uh, yeah, is that an answer? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that is an answer. Excellent. Marin, no, this is, uh, is this a, is this a full t a full time job for me as a producer? Should I be dedicating as much time to my festival strategy as I did to the to producing the film? Well, you know, it's uh, of course it's crucial. Yeah, uh, you can say it dramatically that you have three bullets yeah in your gun. It's world, international, and continental premiere. But on the other hand, I think it's uh, really important to be honest to yourself and to your film. Yeah? And each festival, as you could see here, is part of some family. Yeah? Family doesn't mean friends, but, <laughs> uh, but it means same blood. Yeah? <laughs> and to be honest to which blood your film uh, is dedicated to or is part of. Yeah. Uh, so uh, ju just two examples of Czech films. I can speak about them here. Yeah, you will not tell them. So uh, this is being filmed. Well, I think. Well, <laughs> Don't worry and, about it. And uh, <laughs> and, and it, it's very yeah, Andrea. I know, but uh, but uh, uh, she will somehow forget. Uh, and it's it's really interesting. Yeah? One was uh, done by uh, and two are okay. One was done by a uh, young Czech filmmaker Lucie Králova. Very funny film about uh, lost photographs uh, of Chinese group uh, somewhere in Europe. And she decided that she will find these Chinese. But you know, to us Chinese, yeah, are almost the same every every Chinese, yeah. And, uh, and also, like, there are uh, one billion, three hundred million uh, Chinese people living, yeah? So it was a big question if she will succeed, and she succeed, yeah? She really found them, uh, and the film is about this. And she started with this film at our festival, 
and it was opening film, but uh, there was complete silence after the screening, or I mean after the festival. Nobody called, yeah, no emails, or not so much. Nobody asked for the film. So she re-edited the film. She re-edited? Yes, yeah. yes. She really changed the film, changed the copyright, changed the title, do all this work, and then apply for Karlovy Vary, yeah, this big A festival with documentary competition. And she won there. But uh, two, three years after, pretty famous, but also young, but very successful Czech director, Martin Mareček, did film about uh, uh, Czech help uh, in Africa, yeah, that we decided to build some uh, electric plants and support African people, yeah, and we invested a lot of money. And the film is about two engineers who are coming back uh, to, to, this, uh, to this place after four years, and they realized that it's completely destroyed. Yeah, uh, and the film is about it that uh, you know we want to help, but maybe we are not helping in the right way. And this film is called uh, Solar Eclipse, and it was premiered at Karlovy Vary. Yeah, uh, and uh, again after the uh, after the screening, it had a world premiere. Yeah, after the screening, after the festival, complete silence. Yeah, my my friend was in the jury uh, for the jurors. It was uh, you know. Uh, not possible to talk about these issues like this, yeah. Uh, but then we made ex we made exception and screened this film at our festival, and it won three awards: audience award, international award from international competition, and uh, national competition. Uh, so, because our festival is a little bit different, yeah, we ask questions which are not usually asked. So, and then it was very successful. It was at it fine. Many, many, many other festivals all around the world. So, I think that's what I'm talking about. To be honest, yeah, you really need to be to to know that your film is for some kind of audience, and at what festival you will find it. And audience doesn't only mean uh, uh, people in the cinema, like. Uh, the regular audience, but also professionals, because festivals are somehow labeled, and uh, those people who want some specific kind of films go to Itfa or to Ihlava or to uh, Doc Lisboa and to many other festivals. They know why they go to the website, why they focus on the programming. Uh, so th this is just example, but you know, good luck, yeah? It's always lottery. <laughs> if you take one thing away today, ladies and gentlemen, it's always a lottery. Um, Cynthia, if, you'd, if you had made a film, um, a documentary, a, a, a feature that you felt had good theatrical potential, uh, where would you start? How would you start planning this, if this was your first time, or even your, or even your second time? Well, I think uh, the first thing is to, to I, I agree with Marek, it's important to, to, to look at the families of, of, of what festivals are defending. Mm. Uh, are standing for in terms of cinema, and second to study the programs of the festivals. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, it's very interesting. Sometimes I receive even personal emails of people who uh, propose films to Doc Lisboa that's for sure never read the the program of Doc Lisboa. So that that's a big mistake. Mm. Uh, so I think the, 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 it's important to to know which kind of programmers and film critics will go to that festival. Mm. That is uh, really important. Also in terms of countries, yeah. because uh, of course uh, geography is important sure. and, and different industry profes professionals, programmers, film critics go to certain uh, countries and it's, it's countries that we want to reach. Um, second, of course, you have the three bullets. So it depends on the nationality of your film, of course. If you have a film that is a co-production between two continents, then it's even better. Mm. But, uh, but it depends, of course, on that. Um, and then I would say it's very important to understand what the film festival will do to, for your film. Mm the section where your film will be put. Because sometimes it's very interesting to be in Rotterdam or in Cannes or in uh, Itfa, sorry, or in Locarno, but if your film is completely invisible, yeah. it's, it's useless. Sure. It's better to be in a film festival which is a bit smaller, but it will have a review on uh, mm. Cahiers du Cinéma or mm. in whatever uh, make, media make some noise. Yeah. or certain sound, yeah. and then it will be more known. So, it depends. Also, it can happen uh, like this year's uh, winner in Doc Lisboa. It was the first feature documentary. We did the world premiere in Salengo, and the film is everywhere. 
So, I mean, everywhere. It means a lot of festivals. <laughs> right now it will be shown in Bafisi. So it, it depends on, 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 on your film, but I think most of the most important things are to be honest mm. about the film and, and to be clever about the program of the festivals and really to, to really ask the film festivals what they will do for your film. Sure. Because film festivals should also be honest about it. should that. be championing your work. And yeah. of course the film festival, you know, ideally the film festival will do, will help you as much as they can to position your film for the audience or for, uh, you know, to connect it to industry in the case of where there's a symbiosis between the market and the festival. But there's also a responsibility on the filmmaker to be promoting themselves and their work as well. So if you are lucky enough to be invited to one of your festivals, <laughs> what, what are your top tips for the kind of the best way to to get the value out of that experience? First, to be there. <laughs> yeah, 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 sorry, I, I'm assuming that you're attending with your film, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and once you're there, get totally drunk and throw, <laughs> DVD, throw DVDs around? Uh, What's the... Make sure the right fil people see your film. And how do you, how do, you do that? Uh, don't wait until you are on the festival, but sort of start working on that before yeah. you go to the festival, because if you are there, you are too late, because those people already have all plans. appointments and plans, so uh, yeah, try to sort of personally contact them and see if they're in, they want they're willing to come to your premiere and uh, yeah. And what resources do you make available for filmmakers before the festival starts so that they can plan appropriately? Uh, well, we we usually work with. Uh, I mean, we uh, as soon as we we have a film confirmed and and we know that the filmmaker will be there. We start working on not only if it's a world premiere, mm. we start working on the strategy. future of the film, on the strategy, of course, but also on the the visibility of the mm. filmmaker and the film. So mm. we immediately start contacting film critics, inviting also sometimes people who we know will be interested in that specific work. So it depends. I, I want to give a very funny example that happened to <laughs> us this year. We had a Bangladeshi filmmaker based in New York called Naim Mohaimin. Actually, he also has a UK passport. Um, and he did a trilogy. Uh, he's an artist, and he did a trilogy called The Young Man Was, uh, with a quite important, I mean, he was in Venice, so. And the third part of the trilogy was going to go, was invited to two very important film festivals. But he did the world premiere in Doc Lisboa mm. because we, we screened the three films and we invited him for a long time. We did a huge work on visibility. So suddenly he got a lot of interviews and he was invited to other film festivals, mm. but, but not only, he got an audience. And he made friends with producers, with filmmakers, and that's also important, actually. Sure. And in Doc Lisboa, we, we like to say that a film festival does not do only uh, a good work, a good job for a filmmaker or a producer if they give them uh, visibility or business. We also do it by programming. Mm. I mean, it should be inspiring. Sure. So I think it's... A, sure. Um, Agnieszka is making time uh, signs at me, but I'm going to... I've, <laughs> oh, for the projector. Well, I hope you're not going to be. Of BFI. Yeah, not going to be too angry with me if I just ask a, one final quick question, which is, um, uh, in the in the, in the age of the rise of Netflix online platforms and and documentary, Netflix seem to have a pretty good relationship. Actually, are film festivals as important as they were ten years ago for helping you to find your audience? Uh, is Netflix uh, just part of the later life <laughs> of the film? How is that? How is that new era? evolving for documentary specifically. Marek, it looks Maybe like Maybe if I can start. Uh, yes. You know, it, uh, Netflix, it's an uh, interesting story because, for example, what happened uh, two, three years uh, in Denmark is very significant. Yeah? In Denmark, they have a law that national distributors invest a lot of money in national production. Yeah? That's, why, that's one of the reasons why Danish cinema is so strong. Yeah? And when came Netflix, it became very quickly uh, very successful. And people starting to uh, not go to cinema, but watch films online. Yeah? But uh, Netflix said, but you know, we will not invest money in Danish film production. We don't care. Maybe we will choose one film. So you, you see how easily the system can be d d destroyed. Uh, but because uh, Danish people are very smart, they immediately started to work on the new law. 
yeah, that even online distributors has to contribute to national production. Yeah, uh, so uh, it's it's not about uh, uh, Netflix or other VOD mm. festivals, but it's about the people behind the cinema. Mm. If they care about the whole uh, industry or whole scale of filmmaking, yeah. And if you mention Netflix, I would like to mention uh, a portal called DA Films. What's an uh, online portal where you find uh, more than 1,300 uh, documentary films. And it's run by Doc Alliance, what's cooperation of seven documentary film festivals in Europe. Uh, and uh, you can subscribe or you can watch some films for free and there is every week special, special focus. So uh, this is also one way. But uh, I think festivals are crucial. Yeah, And I, I just want to say uh, w what mentioned Cynthia, that. Uh, really trust to festivals yeah when they uh, program your film at uh, 10 in the evening or at 3 in the afternoon it's not because your film is uh, worse than the film which is at 8 yeah but people go to cinema at 8 because they want to see film for eight time yeah for after work or they want to relax a little bit yeah or they want to relax maybe even more if it's at 10 or 10:30 10 yeah, uh, so the programmers really know the audience. Yeah, we have big fights with those filmmakers. Or also, uh, what's important, if the film is not selected to the festival, that doesn't mean that your film is bad. Please, th that's not true. Yeah, it just didn't fit for various reasons into the program. But uh, there are three or four thousand documentary film festivals or events all around the world. So it's not only about one concrete fil uh, f film festival. Uh, and uh, then, uh, for example, we had a big fight uh, with, so, so I, I just wanted to say, w when you, uh, we had 3,500 submissions, yeah, and we can choose 150. So uh, we made immediately 3,350 directors and producers set, yeah. <laughs> And when we asked for the next film, they wrote us, they usually write us, you didn't choose the last film, why you want the new one? <laughs> <laughs> please, be so polite. <laughs> we are bad guys, but please send us uh, your I, next film again. Yeah? I don't think you're bad guys, I think you're, you're very good guys. And I, I have to, I'm going to have to yeah. stop you. And then, <laughs> then we uh, say in which, <laughs> in, in, in which section it is. Yeah? We, we do it with certain reason why it's in this section. It doesn't mean that this section is better or worse. Yeah? And then the timing. For example, one film we had uh, half past ten in the evening. Yeah? It was world premiere French film, I Am The People. It won the festival then, and then it uh, did a great tour all around the world and ended in Cannes, in acid section. Mm. Yeah? So it's not only that film which starts in Cannes, ended in uh, smaller festivals all around the world, but it can be completely in opposite. Reverse. Thank, guys, thank you very much.